Hey, what is going on, Fan Clan? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Danny Phantom, and if this is your first time here, thank you so much for just coming and listening to what I have to say, checking out the channel. If you like what you hear, please consider hitting that subscribe button down below. Uh, we are very, very close to 24,000 subscribers. Uh, we're about 10 away, and then right behind that is 25,000 subscribers, which is a huge milestone. So thank you so much. Uh, please consider leaving a comment, leaving a like, leaving a thumbs up, sharing with your friends. It goes a long way for the algorithm, and I really, really do appreciate it, especially all of you who have seen my videos before and come back. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. With that being said, I want to talk to you guys today about reprints because there seems to be a lot of misinformation going around about reprints. Uh, we know that there are some coming out. We know that there's a Unified Minds coming out in the middle of December. We know Champions Path Elite Trainer Boxes and Hidden Fates Elite Trainer Boxes are coming out sometime at the end of December slash beginning of January. We know there's a Vivid Voltage reprint coming. We know there's a Darkness Ablaze reprint coming. And even though it's not 100% confirmed yet, we are assuming there is a Cosmic Eclipse reprint coming sometime at the beginning of the next calendar year. Now, a lot of people are starting to freak out about all these reprints, and I'm here to tell you to calm down and slow yourself a little bit, because this is not something that you should be overly concerned about. First of all, I want to touch base on Unified Minds. This reprint is not going to be big. This is not going to be a huge reprint. It's going to be just like what we saw with Unbroken Bonds, just like what we saw with Ultra Prism. I will tell you right up front, be completely transparent with you, Papa and I at the Coliseum, we got six cases. That's all we got. That's what we're allocated for Unified Minds. So it's not a huge amount. We got six cases of this set. We got six cases of Ultra Prism. We got six cases of Unbroken Bonds. That's all we were allowed to order. And I'm sure there's a lot of other companies who weren't allowed to get any, who wasn't even offered to. And there's other companies too that are probably much bigger than us that were able to get quite a bit more. But all this is going to do is it's going to do what the market is doing right now, and that is correcting its price. I know that there's a lot of talk out there about bubbles, and a lot of people are like, see, Pokemon is in a bubble because this base set booster box just sold for $26,000 on PWCC, and a month ago it sold for $34,000 on eBay. It's a bubble. It's bursting. That, that's not necessarily what's happening here. What that means is that there was a lot of people that came into the game, a lot of collectors, a lot of investors, a lot of celebrities who probably didn't have a whole lot of ideas about what the Pokemon whole scene was like, and they spent money that they weren't afraid to lose. And that's the number one thing that you want to worry about anytime you get into a collection-based hobby or an investing hobby is you do not spend more money than what you have. Otherwise, you run into situations where you panic sell. And that's what's happening right now with some of these cards that are out there. So when this market is correcting itself and people are like, hold on, this market price shouldn't be inflated by this much it starts to come back down a little bit. And that's why it doesn't make sense for Cosmic Eclipse booster boxes, for Unified Minds booster boxes, for all these bo booster boxes that are, that are only a year old to be selling for $200 to $250 a piece. I mean, Cosmic Eclipse came out in November of last year. It's a year old. Unified Minds came out in August of last year. It's only like just over a year old. These went out of print quick because the demand went way up. Pokemon probably printed the same amount that they have of previous sets, but they sold much faster. And because of that, the market inflated and blew up. And now Pokemon is correcting the price, bringing it back down to a more respectable level of about $150. To give you an idea of how this investment works and how this business works and how this market works, uh, it was very, very common, if you're somebody who's going to invest in sealed product, to expect a consistent marginal increase on a yearly basis. And if you're somebody who's in it for the long haul, you want to look at Pokemon as a long-term investment, you want to look at it as a long-term collection hobby, where you can pass it down to your kids, or you can sell it off one day and you'll make a nice return, you need to look at it as a small marginal increase every year. About a year and a half ago, I was vending a Pokemon regional event in Madison, Wisconsin. So I was a part of a business called Dedra gaming prior to this I've talked about this before and we had booths at different events where we would go we would sell single cards we would sell seal products and we would just you know interact with the competitive community uh, I had one competitive player who came up to me on like a, a Friday night and his name was Ross, Ross Cawthorn so if you've ever played competitive Pokemon before on a higher scale you probably know who Ross Cawthorn is he's a very prestigious player he's like the only player who's ever qualified for every single world's tournament he um, has won multiple 
uh, regional championships, city championships, state championships. He's been in top eight, I believe, in the world championships. He's, he's just a really great guy, very consistent player. And he came up, and he had a Dragon's Exalted booster box. And he said, hey, Danny, I want to sell this Dragon's Exalted booster box. What can you give me for it? And at the time, a Dragon's Exalted booster box, keep in mind, this is 2019, was selling for about $260. Now, that is a seven-year-old booster box at the time. Dragon's Exalted came out in 2012, I think, like August of 2012. So you're talking seven years old at the time. So for me to go up to him and say, hey, this is selling for about $260, I'll give you $180 for it. That is the marginal increase that we're talking about. Now, Ross wanted $220 for it. We ended up settling on $200, but $200 for a booster box that's seven years old, I'm sure right now you guys would happily pay, I would happily pay $200 for any booster box right now that's seven years old, much less Dragon's Exalted. But that is the increase that you can expect. So that's why it doesn't make sense for a lot of these numbers. It shouldn't be growing three, four, four, five times, 500% growth in the span of a month. We shouldn't see products like Evolutions, which were in print for so long, and then saw such massive, massive growth. The market has to correct. It can't keep up with that pace. And that's why these reprints are starting to make sense. And that's why you shouldn't lose your mind. A lot of the people who are getting out of the game, a lot of the people who are panic selling, are people who probably bit off more than they can chew to begin with. They probably got some misinformation, they probably didn't do their homework properly, and they're just trying to get rid of cards before the market topples. And all they're doing is driving the market down lower and lower and lower. And that's when it's a good time for investors and for collectors to start buying those cards because if you're paying attention to market trends, there's still cards out there that are easy to buy and sell at a profit. So when you're talking from a business standpoint, you want to find that 20% profit margin. That's what you're looking for. Anywhere between 20 and 30% profit margin. You're not looking for these two 300% profit margins overnight. That's why you call those people, that's why you call those people scalpers or flippers because they go to a Walmart or a Target and they buy a Champions Path ETB at $50 and then turn around, sell it on Marketplace an hour later for $100. Those are the people who are in it for just a quick dollar. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. There's people who make very good livings just just all they do is they go in reseller groups. They have Discord channels, they have Facebook groups. All they're doing is they're looking for different shoes, different clothing, different video games, different uh, Pokemon cards or Magic cards or Yu-Gi-Oh cards, whatever the case may be, and all they do is they just go around and resell and they make a living. I get it. You're smarter than me at doing that. That's fine, and that's respectable to me. That's respectable to me to an extent. But you're looking for marginal gains. And especially if you're somebody who's coming in this business as a collector and a long-term investor, you definitely want those marginal gains. So that's why you should not be freaking out about all these reprints coming and about this market um, rebounding and starting to correct itself. If anything, it gives you more of an opportunity for long-term development and long-term growth. And especially as this channel continues to evolve and we talk more and more about competitive play coming back and starting to hit those 20 and 30% margins and not worrying so much about those excessive margins, it lets you really settle in your groove and really start producing a consistent income over the years for years to come. So with that being said, I wanna to talk tonight also about Hidden Fates because Hidden Fates has an elite trainer box that's coming out at the end of December slash beginning of January. I think the street date for it in big box stores is like the middle of December is the rumor that's going around somewhere around December 16th. Now I have seen a lot of pre-order sites out there pre-order prices currently anywhere from $120 for an Elite Trainer Box to $180, $200, somewhere around that range. And I want to talk to you about what's fair. And I posted a tweet not too long ago. You can follow me on Twitter at Danny underscore underscore O, or you can follow me on Instagram at Danny dot Phantom. Um, but I posted a tweet just asking about what people thought was a fair price. Now, this has nothing to do with the Coliseum. This has nothing to do with what we're going to put Hidden Fates uh, ETB's at because I honestly don't even know yet what we're going to put them at. We have a rough allocation number. We want to make sure we can provide whatever we can at the best possible price. And Pop and I just haven't had a whole lot of time to talk about it yet. So this is just me talking to you personally as a collector and trying to go over the specifics. And when we're talking about collecting and we're talking about investing, market price plays a much bigger factor than a retail price, for example. So one of the mis miscommunications that I see out there is a lot of people are communicating that these ETBs are being sold by distributors to vendors at the same price. First of all, I can honestly say that that is not correct. That is not true. We are not getting Hidden Fates Elite Trainer Boxes at the same price, at least not from the three distributors that I've talked to. Now, I know that there's other distributors out there who have agreed to sell them at the original price from over a year ago. I can tell you that the three distributors that I work with have not. They are not selling at that original price of the low $30 mark. They have raised their prices. Not a lot, 
but a little bit. And a lot of the people that I've talked to who are getting quite a bit more than me have also experienced increases from their distributors for this specific product. So that is misinformation that is going around a lot that all of distributors out there are selling this product to vendors at the same price. That's not completely true. I'm sure some are doing it, but not the ones that I'm working with. With that being said, what is too expensive? Well, we have to break down a Hidden Fates ETB first to try and get an understanding of what too expensive is. Because you get 10 booster packs in a Hidden Fates Elite Trainer box. Now, these booster packs are selling on TCG Player right now for like $14 a pop. So right there, you're looking at $140. Then you have a rainbow, or uh, yeah, you have a stained glass uh, Moltres, Zapdos, and Articuno that's selling right now for $35 to $40. So you're looking at $180, $185, just base price, not including the other goodies that come in the Elite Trainer box. Now, is this market going to go down a little bit once these come out? Yeah, of course. But even so, let's say they go down to $10 a pack, and let's say the stained glass bird goes down to $20. Even then, you're looking at about $120. And that's where I kind of fall in as a collector, is what I deem to be a respectable uh, pre-order level for the Hidden Fates Elite Trainer Box is somewhere around $120, I think is somewhat fair. Would I love to get it at like $50 or $60 or $70? Yeah, absolutely, because it helps me in my long-term investment to turn a better profit. Or if I'm just somebody who wants to keep it sealed for a long time, it helps me down the road. But I also understand the realisticness of it all from a business standpoint is that they could make a whole lot more if they just busted them open and sold the loose packs and sold the loose birds. So I'm trying to look at it from both angles. With that being said, also to get some more information that I understand how many are being put into circulation throughout the entire country. So you're looking at about 80,000 Hidden Fates Elite Trainer Boxes that are going to be distributed uh, to big box stores all over the United States. So that may seem like a lot. That may seem like a very big number. But 80,000 really isn't that much. And when it breaks down, you're looking at about 56 Elite Trainer Boxes per store. So per Walmart, per Target. So if you go out to Walmart or Target, you're looking at about 56 that are going to be allocated to that specific Walmart or Target, and it's coming in two different ways. So let's round it up and say 60. Let's say that your local Target is getting 60 Elite Trainer Boxes in two waves. So middle of December, they may, be, may get 30 shipped to them, and then beginning of January, they may get, may get 30 more. Even if they limited their customers to only two Hidden Fates Elite Trainer Boxes per customer, you're looking at 15 customers each wave that you have to beat in order to get your two. So you have to be in line before them or you have to be to the store before them. And I think we can all honestly say that it's very, very difficult to be one of the first ones in the store ahead of 15 other um, competitors, 15 other scalpers or 15 other um, flippers or 15 other just Pokemon collectors in general. Like there's going to be other people who are out there. So it is a very, very small reprint. I know stores who are only getting a couple hundred or I know, I know stores, uh, physical card stores, brick and mortar card stores that are only getting a hundred uh, Hidden Fates Elite Trainer Boxes. So it's really not this gigantic reprint that we thought was going to come and save Hidden Fates and bring it down. So what I would recommend doing is starting to look around and starting to find pricing that you see is the most attractive. When I am talking to you as a collector, I think that $120 is a fair price. So my advice to you is to try and look for product, Elite Trainer Boxes that are under $120. If you can find them under $120, that's what I would recommend buying them at if you're somebody who wants to hold them long term, because I do think that in a year, a year and a half, these are going to be right back up over $200 a piece, and you would be more than happy with gaining uh, 160% profit on an eighty or on a $100 investment. Because remember, we're looking at those small uh, marginal increases over time, and this is actually quite a substantial increase over the span of a year. So that's my recommendation on it when it comes to Hidden Face. I'm very curious to hear what you guys think when it comes to the, the, to the Elite Trainer Box, what you think a fair price is for them, what you already pre-ordered them at, what you're looking for them to be at, uh, what your plan is when these come out. Maybe you already have some, maybe you're not looking anymore. Uh, whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments section down below. I hope you like the open, honest discussion. I just wanted to give you guys an understanding of the market from the way that I see it and what I think you should be doing. Don't freak out. Don't worry about these reprints. They've happened before. Try and get your Elite Trainer Boxes. When I'm talking to you just from a collector standpoint, I think $120 is very safe, very respectable, especially for the long-term investment. If you're somebody who's just looking to open cards with your kids or just open cards for fun, $120, yeah, that seems high. Um, I, I get that, and I completely understand that, and I'm right there with you. So uh, with that all being said, guys, thank you so much for taking a little bit longer than what we normally talk 
uh, and just giving me a listen. I really appreciate it. Please hit that subscribe button down below. Help me on my quest to hit 25,000. Don't forget about the giveaway. Go to pkmncoliseum.com for a 25,000 giveaway special. Really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Peace.